So, in question seven, uh, what I asked you to do was to compute an angle. And it's the angle that the diagonal set in n-dimensional Euclidean space makes with the coordinate axes in Euclidean space. So let's just quickly sketch the picture for two dimensions and for three dimensions. So in two-dimensional space, the xy plane, what does the diagonal look like in R2? Yeah, it's just the line y equals x. So it's this 45 degree. Oh, so I just spoiled the answer. <clears throat> So here's D, in, this is D in the case where the dimension is 2. And so the question is just what is the angle made between D, the diagonal, and the coordinate axes? So I'm going to call this angle theta. By the way, how come I don't specify which coordinate axis I'm talking about? So we could measure the angle to the x-axis. We could also measure the angle to the y-axis. OK, so we're going to have to do it in different dimensions, but how do we know that? OK. All right, so you're, you're looking at the computation and actually the nitty gritty of how you did this angle um, and saying that Yes, absolutely. When we actually do this computation, you'll find out that it doesn't matter which coordinate axis we choose, because each of them is going to be described by a unit vector that's a 1 in one of the positions and is a 0 in all the other positions. Um, and regardless of which position that 1 is in, the arithmetic that you do ends up being exactly the same. Let me also proffer a slightly different reason why it shouldn't matter. Um, what happens to my set, my diagonal set, if we, let's say, if we interchange the x-axis and the y-axis. If we interchange x with y. If I interchange x with y, what happens to d? Yeah, d stays exactly in place. It's, it's a fixed set for that interchange. Every point on the diagonal, if I interchange its x and its y coordinates, it's exactly the same spot, the spot that it was at before. And so there's a symmetry argument that we can make here for the reason why these angles should all be the same. The angle that D makes with the x-axis is the same as the angle made with the y-axis, because if that were not the case, then when I ref interchanged x and y, I would end up needing to move the diagonal D in order to do that. So symmetry uh, argument by itself tells us that we shouldn't care which coordinate axis we choose, because they should all give us the same angle. What is that angle in the case of two dimensions? 45 degrees. That's one I don't necessarily need you to have done all of the linear algebra uh, to, to actually determine. But if you did, that's, that's fine. Um, clearly, we lose that intuition pretty rapidly once we start moving up into higher dimensions. So how did you do it when the dimension was 3? First of all, what does the diagonal look like in the dimension 3? Right, so it's a, first of all, it's still a line, right? Still a line passing through the origin. Let me try and indicate that a little more clearly. So it's still a line passing through the origin. Um, Anthony, you said 1, 1, 1. What, what is that in this picture? Right, it's a basis. Let's call it what it is. It's a basis for D, right? It's a vector whose span is equal to all of D, because it's only one vector, um, its span is just the set of all of its multiples. So what you're doing is you're choosing a vector in D, 1, 1, 1, let's say. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it V. Okay. And that that vector is kind of representative of the diagonal, D, 1, 1, 1. Um, and so if I'm going to find out what angle D makes with the x-axis, let's call that angle theta again. Now how do we do it? We might not have the usual sort of plane geometry to fall back on. So how, how does it work? So we have a formula that can tell us the cosine of the angle in between two vectors. How does it work? V 
dot w, and then we divide by, Heather? Yeah, the product of the magnitudes of V and W. This is the standard vector calculus trope. I've just sort of dialed it up using the transpose lingo instead of the dot product, because that's you know, how we've indicated it so far this semester. So if we just compute that product uh, and divide it by the product of the magnitudes, then we'll have the cosine of the angle. We can take the arc cosine of that and get an approximation for the angle. Um, so we know what V is in this example. What are we using for W? Other vector. Yeah, so if I'm doing the x-axis as an example, then I'll just choose what are the entries of w? 1, 0, 0. Just the first standard basis vector is plenty. So now this formula gives me the way forward. I just need to take 1, 1, 1 and take its dot product with 1, 0, 0 and then divide by the product of the magnitude of 1, 1, 1 with a magnitude of 1, 0, 0. And that's going to give me the cosine of theta. So one of those magnitudes is really easy. What's the magnitude of 1, 0, 0? 1. After all, how do you find the magnitude of something? Each individual entry squared plus. Yeah. Yep, it's the standard souped-up Pythagorean theorem, right? It's the Pythagorean theorem brought up into three dimensions. So the square root of the sum of the squares, um, 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared, square root of 1, that's 1. So that entry in the denominator is just 1. Um, what about 1, 1, 1? What is its magnitude? Square root of 3. Square root of 3. Okay, so in our denominator, we have square root of 3 times 1. In the numerator, what do we end up with? Yeah, because we're taking a dot product now, which means we're multiplying the entries across, and we're adding the results. So 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 times 0. And so when I do that dot product, I end up with 1. So in other words, whatever theta is, it's the acute angle whose cosine is 1 over the square root of 3. So how do we then get a good approximation for theta? Yeah. So theta is the arc cosine of 1 over radical 3. And what did you all get for degrees on that? Like approximately 55? Approximately 55 degrees. OK. So we actually end up with a slightly larger angle in three dimensions than we had in two dimensions, right? In two dimensions, it made a 45-degree angle. In three dimensions, a 55, roughly, degree angle. Um, what did you end up with for n equals 4? About 60. About 60? Because when n is equal to 4, it was the arc cosine of what? Oh, so in fact, it was exactly 60, huh? 1 over the square root of 4. So that was exactly 60 degrees. That's interesting. So in R4, the diagonal makes a 60 degree angle with the coordinate axes. Um, what happens to this as n goes to infinity? What did you find? No, I know. That's cool. That's kind of interesting. Um, so that means that the higher up we go in dimensions, not only do the coordinate axes themselves make right angles with one another, but the diagonal also tends toward a right angle with the coordinate axes. That's the, that picture kind of blows my mind. I don't know about yours. Um, but we end up somehow in a situation where if we could write down all infinitely many coordinate axes in R infinity, whatever that means, and then draw the diagonal, that diagonal would also be mutually perpendicular to all of the other infinitely many coordinate axes somehow, which would seem to make it yet another new dimension that the other ones could not go in somehow. Uh, it hurts kind of hurts to think about. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was kind of a neat problem because it gives us an insight into higher dimensions um, that kind of really plays with at least my intuition about what's possible uh, in lower dimensions. That the higher up we go, the more that this diagonal makes a right angle with the coordinate axes.